Where are these actors' commitment? Yeah, come on, really choke them. <sighs> While Return of the King has some magnificent payoffs for its characters and some of its minor plot lines, it has some of the most egregious problems out of the three films. And I don't want to come off like a jerk here because I do love these films, but this is going to be one bloody review. Because these failures break the trilogy's ending. So let's not waste any time. There's always that to manage here. Yeah. So after their contrived victory at Helm's Deep, the company rides to Orthanc to round up Saruman. Gandalf explains... We need him to talk. When you hang from a gibbet, for the sport of your own crows, we shall have peace. Yeah, now Saruman's sure to help. Jeez, read the room, Theoden. What a tremendous scene, though. Feast your eyes. Saruman can hurl fireballs. Too bad that would have never come in handy. I have no use for it! Then we come to this scene and it's completely ridiculous. A Nazgul flies over and doesn't sense the ring despite just calling out for it just moments ago. The Nazgul continue to let us orcs down. We're being led by the blind, deaf, and dumb. Uh, for Morgoth's sake. Are you telling me that these orcs are so disciplined that not a single one of them has the situational awareness to look around and see hobbits in plain view? I guess staring at the back of orc helmets is far more interesting. Must be leading these orcs with man flesh on a stick. Armor is a joke yet again in this. It's as useful as a yarn knitted condom. There's no way in black speech an arrow from this bow, fired from this distance, is going to penetrate that armor. Even worse in this scene, Faramir allows the orcs to ambush and surround them, instead of setting up a shield wall with archers behind. What, are they using all their shields for bedpans? I see the idea. His idea was to let some of them in and then start slaughtering them from behind them, but wouldn't work. Some orcs have hammers, which is pretty cool against armor because you can't cut through it. You want to break everything under it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even a single archer in a fortified position to shoot at the incoming boats. Good thing this isn't a decoy and the north side wasn't left completely undefended. Uh... We've sent scouts to Ker Andros. If the orcs attack from the north, we'll have some warning. Nah, I guess they were no help. I suppose they were eaten. No wonder Denethor was pissed. Boromir wouldn't have let the city fall like this. And then we get to my favorite scene that always cracks me up. When Faramir and his men are retreating to Minas Tirith, Gandalf rides out to shine his flashlight at the Nazgul. But not alone. For some reason, he brings Pippin with him. Why did he bring Pippin? I can just imagine Gandalf seeing the dire circumstance and going, Come on, Pippin! We must ride! Come on, get up on Shadowfax with no saddle! Does anyone have a stool? Oh, for God's sake, come on! Oof. As he lifts Pippin up to charge the fell beast and Nazgul of Mordor. And I know why they put this in. It's so we could have the contrivance of Faramir, Nose, and Pippin, and we could have this scene. Faramir, this is not the first halfling to have crossed your paths. You've seen Frodo and Sam. They could have fixed the scene easy by just having Pippin run up to Gandalf when he returns. You know, something a friend would do. And the scene would have played out exactly the same. I still to this day have no idea why they went this route instead. Hey man, never underestimate the power of a human shield. If you let them go, your life will be forfeit. I guess they weren't kidding about that. Faramir only took two hours to the chest. Boromir would have taken three. Denethor was such a dick for sending him on a suicide mission that Faramir is actually happy to see his father burned alive. Why the hell are they moving so slow for? 
Everyone knows if you have the chance to light your boss on fire, you don't hesitate. Now let's do a quick recap for this. Sam overhears Gollum conspiring with, well, himself to kill the hobbits. Frodo plays Peacemaker in order to keep going. Gollum warns Frodo that Sam will soon ask him for the ring. While the two hobbits are resting, Gollum sprinkles crumbs all over Sam's back in order to attempt to frame Sam for the missing Lambus bread. When Frodo is presented with the confrontation, the crumbs crawl to the front of Sam's shirt. Frodo is so shocked by the living crumbs, he nearly faints. Concerned for Frodo's health and sanity, Sam offers to carry the ring, just as Gollum predicted 10 seconds ago. Share the load, share the load, the load. Now I'm way too mature to make the joke that you all want me to make. Yep, way too mature. Way too mature. And Frodo responds to his most trusted companion with a simple request. Go home. Yeah, it's, it's very conveniently timed, isn't it? You better leave now in the middle of enemy territory where we've only just survived getting here ourselves. Why wouldn't Frodo trust Gollum? Come on, would this face lie to you? Well, you know, you could say it's the ring affecting him and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, but it, it, you have to kind of factor that in because yeah, what... Gollum and the ring would be working together. The ring sows distrust, right? And here's Gollum sowing distrust. Why do they trust and Gollum? So on, on, so on, so on. But on two, on two fronts, he's got, he's got the same thing being told to him. He's not sleeping right. He's not eating right. And for hobbits, like how many ho how many meals do hobbits have in one day? All that affects your psyche. See, it's not nonsensical or anything. It's yeah. just that I can't... I honestly just don't envision any kind of time, unless they're with Gollum for literally years, that they would ever trust him, even Frodo. It just, you know, I have to believe he can come back. That's not the same as trusting him, though, is it? Believing that one day he'd be, you know, free of the ring's influence, which is what it's about. It's not, it's not like Frodo's like, one day Gollum could be normal again. He knows that's not going to happen. Yeah, well, maybe one day he could be normal, you know, with uh, some regular meals every day and um, some good exercise, <laughs> some yeah, proper clothes. I, 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 th I think it's one of those ones that with, with, the, with everything that um, Frodo knows... Mm -hmm. I honestly just think it's incredibly stupid and beyond everything. Trust him. Now that Frodo and Gollum are alone, it leads to the movie's end. Or at least it should have been for Frodo, because Gollum abandons him. And as you can see, Frodo is stabbed through the abdomen with a stinger the size of a parking cone. I guess the director kind of forgot about the mithril. I'm no doctor, but being impaled through the abdomen is going to put you out of the race for a while. Whether you survive or not. The only defense I hear for this, which is how it's portrayed in the book, is Frodo was stung in the neck. What do you guys think? Is this the neck? Oh yeah, and Gollum is chucked off a cliff. Keep that in mind. Anyways, I think this battle went pretty well. Oh wait. Should we move? Nah. I guess the women and children weren't a priority. Gandalf lined up all these men and didn't even bother getting the civilians out of the first level until after the streets were swarming with orcs. How embarrassing. To the second level! Get the women and children out! Get them out! How did you even get that? What? Yeah, right? How would you load that into a catapult? They're like, hey, in this four minute time period when the catapult started shooting, let's take a chunk of our castle and instead of our actual catapult shots, let's put this chunk of our castle onto the catapult. If they ever run out, all they have to do is start is just take some sledgehammers, you know, take out their own infrastructure. Their catapult destroyed it instantly with a smaller rock, but th that didn't shatter. It, is their whole plan to wait until their castle gets destroyed and chunks yeah, that's of it unlimited fall. ammo, man. Now 40 people will try to bring that to the nearest trebuchet. <laughs> I just don't understand why they're firing chunks of castle. Hey, uh, Gothmog, you want to not stand out in open fire? I know you have Parkinson's disease, but you should hobble your lumpy ass out of there. Gandalf kicks ass to save Pippin, and Pippin returns the favor saving Gandalf. I like this moment, and it gives Pippin another notch on his belt. It was convenient how when he stabbed this guy, he didn't follow through on his swing. Smash Gandalf in the skull anyway. 
It was obviously a spinal shot, the deadliest of hobbit attacks. With the accuracy of a surgeon and the strength to penetrate even the toughest armor. And Legolas gets way too much credit for killing an Oliphant when Aomer annihilates two with one shot. Hell, even this very petite man can take these out. I am no man. Right. I was just pretending with everyone else that we didn't notice you and a hobbit riding with us for three days. Catapults and trebuchet is good. Siege towers are favorable. Massive battering ram. Grand-tastic. Hell, even the Nazgul make an effective air force, taking out the trebuchets and some of the men for a time. They probably could have taken out the whole wall of men had they not evaporated from the battle. They're just gone. What are they, on their lunch break on Taco Tuesday? Is it 420 already? Did Lassie call and Sauron fell down a mine shaft? Color me surprised. While the Nazgul are the embodiment of fear, they don't pose much threat. Sure, men freak out for a couple minutes in their presence, but they themselves are cowardly and incompetent. They're defeated by water twice, outsmarted with pillows and mattresses and too scared to go searching further. Five of them were defeated and horrified by a man with a big matchstick. They fail to sense and take the one ring even when it's calling out to them multiple times. And now they're just completely out of this fight because apparently it was too much for them even though they clearly had the edge. I'm not even sure why they're leading these armies. I guess it just goes to show if you're terrible at your job, you'll definitely get promoted to upper management. When we finally see one again, it's the almighty Witch King failing to land the killing blow on Gandalf because he heard the plot horn. The director is calling me. My car is getting towed away. Seems like you could have checked that out after slaying the literal manifestation of your enemy's morale. It only takes a second. Where did you even go when this cavalry lined up? Yeah, thanks for your help breaking the charge. And apparently the Nazgul don't learn from their own history either. This has already been tried before. Remember? Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. But guess what, bitch? I hate poetry. I think that we can all agree that Grand was the MVP of this fight. He forgot to use this thing first. So stupid. <laughs> you can see this thing from a mile away. Yeah. You need 17 elephants to bring this thing up. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, go with the other one. <laughs> Why? But sir, we, we brought this giant grand battering ram all the way here. Remember? Can we maybe try that one? No. Yeah. Use the fucking wood one. Oh, we yeah, bring up Ron. Yeah, good idea, guys. Uh, someone needs to get a high enough kill streak to unlock the perk. Looks like Ron's man. back on the menu, boys. <laughs> oh no! Can I change my answer to that necromancer guy? Frodo get down! And Frodo dies again. Frodo hides behind a rock from the great eye, who has spotted some movement in the valley. You guys should already know where I'm going with this. It's been in multiple videos now. Concealed within his fortress, the Lord of Mordor sees all. His gaze pierces cloud, shadow, earth, and flesh. That eye would 100% see them, and at this point the story is over. Frodo is seen, the mission is compromised, and it's only a matter of time before they're found and the ring reclaimed. The fact that the movie forgets this kind of breaks the end of the movie. Here I'd like to know why Sauron's forces stepped outside the walls to face the men of the west. Sure we clearly have the numbers, but they're within arrows range. We could have fought them from within the walls and saved many orc lives. Just wake the Nazgul from their comatose to pick off the retreated. Yes. Literally all the archers from both sides should already be shooting at each other. Also, there is a lot of people in the center, so you have some room to spread it out and make the most of your uh, army. So 
pr- probably not charge, but you know, I would spread it out somewhat, keep it together so people can cover each other. Also, it's very odd that earlier in the film they show Sauron's physical form. He is holding a Palantir when Aragorn confronts him with the one in Gondor. This solidifies two things in the storytelling. That yes, Sauron did fear Aragorn, so much so that he did not dare face him on the battlefield at the Black Gate. And two, he's not that arrogant if he's just going to hide in his tower. Yeah, most people know that Sauron's physical form was cut from the final battle, but knowing that they made a mistake doesn't fix another. And I guess while we're on the topic of arrogance, I never understood why Sauron didn't collapse the crack of doom, knowing full well it is his only weakness. You'd think you might want to discreetly cover that up. Oh, but Sauron knew nobody would have the willpower to destroy the ring. While that may be true, he's operating that logic on a sample size of, what, one? One man couldn't do it, so no one in Middle-earth can? It's just poor logic on the part of Sauron's character. And yeah, I'm not saying the story should have played out that way, otherwise it would have been quite tragic. All I'm saying is, maybe it's not a bad idea, and there's not much to justify why he wouldn't. Frodo and Sam finally make it to the ass crack of doom, and there should be no more interferences, right? But oh no, somehow Gollum returned. Yeah, okay, I know there's a role of dumb, no body, no death, but Gollum's not surviving this fall. No way in hell. Fuck it, whatever, Frodo and Sam run into a volcano. These hobbits are clearly fireproof. Why didn't they just fight the ball gag? There was also quite a bit of shoehorned romantic tropes in this one. I want to know, which you guys think came more out of nowhere? The fact that Arwen is dying for some reason, or that Eowyn hooks up with Faramir? All this on a love triangle to boot. So oh, this motherfucker Aragorn is quite the carpetbagger in this. What do I mean? Well listen, tell me dude wasn't leaning on that bitch Eowyn to boost his fucking political favor, alliance, and influence with Rohan. Good god man, that shit is just cruel. He is an honorable man. I cannot give you what you seek. Hey, at least he wasn't dub thumping, all right? And there you have it. If it wasn't for the script, Golem dies early, Gandalf dies twice, and Frodo dies three times in Mordor. All of this contradicts the conclusion of the ending, and that must mean they're pretty shit, right? Well, not exactly. If there's one thing we've been short on, it's the heart of Lord of the Rings. Sure, we can criticize some of these tactical and narrative flaws, but Lord of the Rings is much more than a summary of events. It's a focus on a world of characters united by optimism, who, despite their internal and external struggles against monumental odds, find the willpower, courage, and integrity to repel the indecency and calamity of all they cherish, that even the most unlikely can have surprising and even significant impact. Even if Frodo isn't your typical hero, and ultimately fails in the end, Lord of the Rings will always have a place among the greatest trilogies of all time. I didn't think it would end this way. End? No, this is not the end. Trilogies are a path that we all must take. For I'll be covering much more in my debunk series, as well as covering Rings of Power in the near future. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you didn't, make sure you don't like and subscribe so you won't see my videos anymore. Until next time, be critical, stay excellent. I did that while winded.